These are the trains that will serve the 2010 World Cup. They are over 40 years old. Most run late and many cause death or injury. Dirty and dangerous. Few are fit to carry cattle, let alone people. Metro rail trains. What should be a safe, affordable and reliable means of transport has instead become a weapon of murder. In recent months, over 20 people have died brutally on these tracks, thrown out of moving metro rail trains. Allegedly, there were security guards killed for failing to support their union Satawu strike. Metro rail condemned the violence but the deaths have highlighted its poor safety and security measures. I think the space to do these violent acts on trains, throwing people off, is in part facilitated by the system. There should be adequate security. The door should not be able to open en route, and a range of other safety measures should be in place. In the past few years, many ordinary commuters have met a similar fate, by accident or design. Critics claim that Metro Rail simply ignores the problem. Rail, a vast network crisscrossing the country. It's used to transport goods and people, servicing commerce and industry. Every day, six to seven million people travel to work on these passenger trains, operated by the state agency Metro Rail. It's a vital mode of transport for the poor, yet the trains they board are unsafe and unreliable. In the first three months of this year, 28 people were killed on Metro Rail. Over 400 were injured in the Vitz region alone. Underreporting probably means that these figures are conservative. A lot of the people aren't uh, always killed, but they are maimed, you know, amputations, lose legs, crippled, and so on. That happens on a regular basis. A lot of the reasons being the overcrowding of the trains and the train doors that are, are not functional. In peak hours, the system just can't cope. There's massive overcrowding. At times, 11 commuters are crushed into one square metre. So desperate commuters cling to the outside. The trains are 30 years and older. They are in a very poor state. They fail regularly. If the train doors were functional, um, people wouldn't be thrown out of the uh, uh, out of the trains. It results in tragic accidents. <laughs> So I said, no, when I came, the train was here, was open, there was a lot of people, who was in the street, of people, who was in the street, who was in the street. So I said, I was in the street, there was a lot of great space between the train and the platform. So I said, I was in the street, there was a lot of space, so I had an accident, I had a lot of pain, and I had a lot of pain. Injuries from train accidents often result in serious disabilities. So much so that victims may never be able to support themselves again. It is very hard for me to go to my life. It's very hard for me to go to my time and to go to my time and to go to my time and to go to my time. So I feel as if there is no one who is a leader, but I still live. But I'm very hard for me to go to my time and to go to my time. I think that this accident is going to be a lot of people who are going to be a lot of people. It's what I'm going to do with my life, my whole life is going to be a lot. Another major problem is the lack of security on trains and at stations. There's little access control at platforms. It's easy for anyone to enter or escape. The few guards there are are mostly unarmed and poorly trained. No one takes them seriously. It makes metro rail trains a haven for criminals who often rob, rape or kill vulnerable commuters. They literally can get away with murder. Jacques Adendorf broke his neck when he fell out of a departing train. He's now paralyzed. 
At the time of his attack, there was no security at all. His attackers ran free. <laughs> well, at the time, I was the one with the, the, when I was lying there on the stairs and I can, couldn't feel my legs or nothing. But at that time, I, I know I'm... There's no more life in my legs. So you're incomplete. When you can't do nothing for you, you don't have any movements in your legs. And but by, by me, I have only movement in my hands, but I can't pick nothing up. Both Jacques and Lawrence are members of the Rail Commuter Action Group, ordinary people who had had enough and decided to take on the government. Traveling on Metro Royal train just like you do every day. He was brutally attacked. He was murdered. Where was the security? There was no security. They believe that Metro Rail is dangerous. If Metro Rail took better care of its passengers, injuries and deaths could be avoided. It all started here in Fishhook. The Rail Commuter Action Group was formed by Leslie and Suzanne van Minnen after the death of their 20-year-old son, he was fatally stabbed on his way home. We had a goal, we had a motive for doing what we did, and the motive was purely to make sure that um, Metro Rail took responsibility and accountability and did something constructive uh, to improve safety and security of passengers. Um, we didn't want other people to have to go through the pain and suffering that we had gone through, and so many others prior to us. Together with 50 other victims, they took Metro Rail to the Constitutional Court. In 2004, they won. The court ruled that Metro Rail is responsible for safety and security. It was a landmark victory, a case of David and Goliath, where ordinary people can make government accountable. But the ruling hasn't brought the changes the action group had hoped for. Since then, they've seen no improvements to the system. The victory for us is of little consequence. It doesn't bring our son back and the many other people that have, have paid with their lives on, on the system. But we firmly believed at that time that we had won a moral victory over that which is wrong. And as the years progressed, we're two years away from that date, um, we, we realized that that victory was actually a hollow victory. Most of Metro Rail's problems stem from aging trains and infrastructure. The whole system has become unsafe and train accidents are increasing. In the last month alone, there have been two major collisions in Gauteng. It seems they were the result of technical failures and human error. Train transport is one of the key modes of public transport and it's been systematically underfunded and really driven to a state of disrepair. And this is because of government's cut in expenditure and the management of metro rail. A key problem is signal failure. Equipment is outdated or broken, which wouldn't be of such concern if the backup system of technicians and engineers were reliable. But metro rail has suffered huge staff losses. Nowadays, people without the necessary experience authorize train movements. Add to this technical malfunctions, and the consequences can be catastrophic. They uh, wanted to institute a method of working where one would ride from a place as far as Randfontein, right into Johannesburg, to Bramfontein, uh, without uh, no signals working. They give him a, a, an authority at that point, and he'd go. I immediately phoned the management and said, let's not have a repeat. Let's not have a repeat of this. But these things fall on deaf ears. Metro Rail blames many of their problems on poverty, as informal settlements spread onto railway lines. This has led to whole sections of rail being closed, like here in Albert and Gauteng. <laughs> It's unlikely that this station will ever reopen. 
crime is high and vandalism or theft of rail property rife. And when so many people live so close to the lines, people, often children, get killed. Cable theft is another problem. Because these wires are copper-based, they have a high resale value. It's costing the company millions of rand a day and causing regular delays. One of the other things that really upsets the commuters is the delays on the trains. There's a ripple effect on the commuter because the commuter then uh, gets, work, gets to work late. They are disciplined, even to the extent that they are sometimes dismissed. We are very angry. We are also late at work. Daily, trains are delayed or cancelled. It's become so bad that angry commuters are turning violent, torching trains to vent their frustration. The burnt-out trains land up here in Brumfontein, Joburg. The damage is running into millions. Because no new sets are being bought, it places more strain on an already collapsing system. It seems little is being done to sort out the problem. Everything is blamed now on either cable theft or signalling problems. But all of those things really come about because of the underfundedness and under-expenditure. If there's criminality somewhere, you've got to respond to it through policing and other measures. You can't blame the service and let the service decline because of that. Metro Rail staff are at risk too. There is supposed to be security at these stations, but many have been robbed, attacked or held at gunpoint. Yet they cannot speak out. Last year, two employees raised their concerns over safety and security in the media. Disciplinary charges were laid and one lost his job. Other employees agreed to speak to us on strict conditions of anonymity. If I was a commuter, I wouldn't get on these trains. They are really in a bad condition. You take this set, it was supposed to be repaired, you book the fault, but when you go fetch it, it's still in the same condition. So what are they doing about this? Nothing. I was suspended because I, I demanded safety to be escorted. I demanded security and uh, I was told that there was not enough manpower and um, and my, I felt that my safety was being compromised and yet they say that safety is non-negotiable. There was a security personnel from Metro Rail, but he was surprised with weapons and then he can himself not protect you, how will he the driver or the guard protect We approach Metro Rail to get answers to these questions, but they declined an interview. They said the issue of safety and security was sub decay. We weren't surprised by this refusal. Metro Rail management have never once come forward on television to account for their service, even though they claim that safety of commuters is paramount. <laughs> Cape Town, June 2006. The Rail Commuter Action Group has yet again taken Metro Rail to court, trying to force them to be accountable for the safety of their passengers. This time, it's a fight over how compensation claims are handled. Metro Rail wanted to split up the Rail Commuter Action Group to deal with victims individually. But a recent judgment stopped this, so the group battle is still on. What it has shown is that the judiciary, that is one of the arms of the state that must defend people's rights, is clearly being shunned by those who have money, and in this case Metro Rail, with the support of government. So they're refusing to implement the decisions of the Constitutional Court, which is a sad day in South Africa. They're refusing to bow down to the principle of class actions for their negligence in providing the service, which is another sad day. When the Constitutional Court ruled that Metro Rail is responsible for passenger safety and security, the judges assumed this government body would act in good faith, guided by public interest. They also expected victims to be compensated. The action group believes Metro Rail is shirking these responsibilities. Government is supposed to be responsible, government is supposed to uh, affect the will of the people 
and to ensure the safety of the people in the country. And uh, the court decided, well, well, here we have a public, or a quasi-public body. Uh, there's no reason to believe that they do not accept their duty to, uh, to uh, look after the safety of the commuters, and uh, there's no reason to believe they won't put measures in place. Um, of course, we, we differ from that, and we have every reason to believe they won't do it unless they, they're ordered to do so in very specific terms, and uh, that's why we're going to court. Back on the tracks, we wanted to see how the system operates. At present, the arrival and departure of a train is in the hands of two people, the train driver and the metro guard. The signal to leave a station is given at the sole discretion of the metro guard. Even though they can't always determine whether it's safe or not. They will suspend you. You'll be taken off the train. They say you don't have a right to refuse to drive the train. Isn't safety anyone's right? The guards know most doors are dysfunctional and don't close. But delaying a train means risking the wrath of passengers or management. Some trains have been revamped and engineers have designed mechanisms that radically improved safety. A computerized pressure system locks the doors. If any are open, it stops the train from moving and alerts the metro guard. But Metro Rail has allegedly dismantled or failed to engage the system. This apparent negligence has once again led to the courts. Where all else has failed, victims are now laying criminal charges against Metro Rail. They're accusing not only management, but individual train drivers or Metro guards of culpable homicide. We will take whatever action is necessary against a train driver and a train guard or controller to achieve our means of a safe and secure rail system. Metro Rail have killed my son. I have nothing more to lose. I am not prepared to accept the farcical situation that we find ourselves in, um, in terms of non-acceptance of responsibility of proper safety measures on the train. In March this year, journalist Linda Loxton died after trying to board a train to work. She is survived by her 78-year-old mother, who now lives alone. The families of people killed on Metro Rail believe that the buck stops with Metro Rail and its employees. The doors were open, she was getting into the train. The security chappies were helping her into the train because of her baggage. The train went off. No whistle was blown, no flag was flown. The train just went off. Her, her foot was caught in the train and it her, dragged her along the platform. I mean, that itself is a terrible accident. And she kept on complaining. She says, Ma, my whole body is painful. She did this. Linda had written repeatedly to Metro Rail about its poor service, but ended up a victim. I was in Switzerland for two and a half years. And no way can a train go if a door is open. So the Metro Rail chappie said to me, as I said, I think the chappie is uh, the uh, manager here in the Cape. He says, you know, it's a fifth world and they vandalise the coaches. So I said, well, then take them off. And she did that they are not able to move if the, gate, the, the doors are open. In November last year, Cully Peterson was on his way home when he fell off an overcrowded train in Cape Town. I only remember telling... God, why him? Why don't take? Why, why do you take mine? Why? I'm sorry. <laughs> he wants justice, not only for his brother, but for all who risk their lives on Metro Rail. He's laid criminal charges of negligence against the Metro Guard. 
Well, I think that the, uh, our company is as big as, as Metro Rail, they surely um, security and, and safety of, of, of uh, passengers must be on their high priority list. And uh, if we all read the news uh, recently, the violence on the trains, the attacks, because people are frustrated. And I think they, they are responsible. They must be all responsible. Because they are giving the service, but in that you must protect your passengers also. For victims, the outcomes of their cases are uncertain and the realities harsh. So far, there has been little sign that anything will change. If one looks at the, at the figures, it's cheaper for Metrorail to compensate their victims than it is for them to upgrade the system. But the Department of Transport says there is hope for commuters. A recent merger has brought Metrorail under its umbrella. So after years of underinvestment, the department is now prepared to fund a much needed overhaul. 2.3 billion has been set aside for Metrorail. There may be a very unfortunate perception that nothing has been done. I can assure you it's the furthest thing from the truth. In essence, unfortunately, a rail system of this nature and just given the level of uh, deterioration that has been seen over Metro Rail over the years would take an extensive investment program. That is not something you could rush and do in a year or two. In the South African context, that's even more important because in fact, it's about transformation of the economy, it's about transformation of our urban cities in the way that they've been designed. So there's a whole lot more that must go into a plan about improving passenger rail services than just twigging on the surfaces and dealing with the small issues. But worryingly, 20 billion is to be spent on the Howe train. In comparison, the money for Metro Rail is a drop in the ocean. As one researcher puts it, one how train is the equivalent of over 13,000 buses, plus more than 3,500 rail coaches, plus almost 120,000 taxis, plus 12,500 kilometers of one lane tarred roads. But for poor commuters, will public transport really change? But we have to ask the question who will the how train be serving? The Gau train, in our opinion, will be serving the rich people, the riches of the rich. Get the existing, the existing infrastructure and rolling stock. Uh, nothing is being done to that, or very little is being done. Metro Rail has made their trains safe and secure. SMS agree or disagree to 34383. You can also SMS the word Truth plus your comments. <laughs>